Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2007 Toyota Tundra. We're doing a transmission filter change and transmission flush. And uh, what we have is an oil fluid capacity site here. I want to show you this first off because it gives you all the fluid recommendations. The site is uh, fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and enter in the year of your vehicle and then the, uh, the make of the vehicle. It'll ask you also for the engine size and it'll bring up a, a sheet here that gives you all the specifications which oils go into which cavity and uh, it also gives you on the, on the other side here on the other side of the sheet we have uh, the filters that it recommends and then it also goes into the capacities how much uh, each cavity holds the engine the cooling system the transmission differentials uh, transfer case all that and uh, this is uh, something you can print off, it makes it easy to find. Uh, it's very hard to find all this information in your owner's manual. This puts it all in one place and very handy for you. So that's something that's, that's a very handy tool and you can do that for any vehicle that you have. Now the fluid we'll be using today is the AMSOIL ATL. That's what this uh, transmission calls for. And uh, it's a synthetic, chemically engineered synthetic. And this will give you much longer transmission life. Uh, it runs a lot cooler than petroleum based oils, usually by 20 to 50 degrees, which helps all the soft materials, all the seals to last longer in that transmission, which increases the transmission life. Um, it also meets and exceeds the specifications for a Toyota WS specification. So that's what we'll be using in that today. I um, wanted to show you some of the oils that I've done over the years. I've been doing these transmission flushes for about 20 years. And uh, these are some examples of some of my customers, my local customers, transmissions that I've flushed. Uh, typically with the transmission, uh, if you're just simply hooking up a machine and doing the flush without taking off the pan and cleaning up the dirt load that's in that transmission, uh, you're asking for trouble. So the first thing that I do is pull the transmission pan if it has one, and I clean the magnets, I clean the, uh, any of the material, the clutch material that's worn off or any of the metals out of that pan. And most of that's gonna settle out in the pan uh, because it, the oil slows down at that point. It has the opportunity to drop out of suspension, all that dirt and so on. So these are some examples of uh, vehicles that I've done with 100 to 150,000 miles on them. And you can see this oil, uh, you know, the new oil's nice and cherry red. That's what they're supposed to look like. Uh, this one was out of a Chevrolet pickup with about 150 to 175,000 miles on it. It's a farm account of mine. Uh, I work on his semis, I work on his trucks. This was done about eight years ago. I flushed it with AMS oil. He was just here with that truck well, within the last year and uh, working beautifully. Uh, still has the AMS oil in it, no problems. This was out of a Chevrolet Lumina and that one had uh, right around 150 to 175,000 on it. You can see that oil is pretty well broke down, oxidation. Uh, again, customer's very happy with that. This one here is out of a 2012 Chevrolet Spark. That one had about 50,000 miles on, very hard on the transmission fluid. And that stuff looks like waste oil. And uh, that's one where I would do the tranny fluid a little more often because it's so hard. Some transmissions are just hard on transmission fluid. So these are examples of some that I have flushed over the years. These are probably the worst ones that I've seen. So the way I do it uh, works very well. I've had no issues with it over the last 20 years on any of them. I've done Volkswagens, the Toyotas, the Fords, the Chevys, you name it. Um, another thing too with this transmission, uh, there's a thermostat for the transmission and that thermostat, uh, once it gets up to temp, it allows flow up to the cooler and that cooler's up in front of the radiator at the front of the truck. Now they have a bypass for that uh, thermostat. You're going to need a 1 16th inch drill bit to bypass that to make it flow up to the cooler to do the flush. So we'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. Uh, another thing is there's a procedure that they have out there for doing this transmission flush. And one of the things that they, they make you fully aware of is, is that you need to have it up to temp to be able to check the uh, fluid level. And this paper here gives all the information you need. Um, one thing they show on this, and that's on the transmission right here, they have a fill plug. On the newer ones, it's on the back, on the passenger side. On these older ones, it's 2007, it's more towards the front on the driver's side. Those are the fill plugs. Okay, so there's two different locations for those. And they also have a, uh, a way to check to see the temperature is on that transmission. They have the ALDL connector and right here is the instructions for that. 
What I do is I get the transmission up to temperature that they want to check at, and that's between, I believe it's 110 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I've got a thermal imaging camera. What I do is I drive it, bring it back. Once I see that, you know, 115, 130 degree range that they want, that's when I'm checking the fluid level. Okay. And on the back here, this kind of shows the, uh, the last sheet. It shows the how that level is checked. Um, it's got a uh, kind of a tube up there where the normal level is. You take that plug out of the bottom. We'll show you that procedure as well. So this gives you some idea of, of uh, how to go about that. Um, gives you some of the torque specs as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this uh, transmission flush and be back with you. Okay, we're under the transmission here. We've warmed it up. I've got a uh, thermal imaging camera on it. And that upper left hand corner is what the target temp is. And I got it right on the pan. So we're running about 133 degrees. They want it between 115 and 130 degrees and you check the fluid level. So we've got it up to temp. Um, next thing I'm going to show you is how to bypass that uh, thermostat for the cooler. So we can get flow through there so uh, we can see what our level is before we ever pull this pan. I'm going to check the level before we do the, the flush on this. So right here is the thermostat for your transmission. And uh, what we're going to do is bypass that so we can get flow up to the uh, transmission cooler to do the flush. And you push in on the center and then you take a 1 16th inch drill bit. And what you do is you keep it pushed and there it is right there. So that will open up the passage so we have flow up to the cooler. So next thing we'll do is check the fluid level here before we do our flush. Okay, this is a five millimeter hex on here. This is where you check the level. They've got a dip tube that goes up inside to, for the normal level. So with the engine running up the temp, we're at about 130 degrees. I got the uh, thermostat propped open so that we have flow up through the cooler. And we're gonna start the truck up and we're gonna take this plug out and we should have oil just dribbling out right now. The truck is level, it's up level all the way. So that's not an issue. Go ahead and start it. As soon as you shut it off, the fluid goes back to the sump and starts running out. So basically there's just a tube up in there and that tube is what uh, tells you your level with everything running. Okay, so that's our fluid check. And I believe that's probably the original fluid. It's getting a little dark. Don't look too bad for 130,000 miles. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start dumping the oil out. We've got a drain plug right here. We're going to pop that out and drain out the pan. We're going to remove the pan. We're going to put in a new filter, clean the pan, clean any magnet that's in there put it back up and we're going to refill it with the Amsoil synthetic and we're going to do our flush. So we'll get started with that and be back with you. Okay we've got this drain plug out right here and we drained out I'd say probably close to a gallon that came out of that pan. So we're going to pop that drain plug back in so we don't have it dribbling all over us. And uh, these bolts for the pan are 10 millimeter so we're going to take all those out around there and uh, get the pan down and get that cleaned up. So we'll do that and get back with you. Okay, there's four bolts that hold this filter up there, 10 millimeter head. We're going to take those out. And when that comes down, there's going to be some fluid coming at you too, because that filter is going to have fluid in it. And all four of those bolts are the same length, so you don't have to worry about where they go. And then there's just an O-ring seal. Take that filter out. There we go. Right here is an O-ring. Make sure you take that out because there's a new one with the new filter. So that's it for pulling out the uh, tranny filter. Okay, we've got this gasket surface area here and there's some dirt, an accumulation of dirt on the front. We want to clean that up, keep it out of the transmission. Uh, and take a nice uh, sharp scraper and make sure that you don't gouge the aluminum. But uh, go ahead and clean that area up. 
nice and uh, neat like so we can get all that uh, that dirt out of there so it don't fall in the pan and go back together. And up front here we got some too. And basically it's going to be about the same thing. Just to work it off and uh, keep it out of the valve body area. So we're going to go ahead and finish cleaning that all up under here. When I'm all done I'll probably take some brake clean solvent or ether starting fluid and get that all nice and clean and dry so we're ready to go back up. Okay, this is the pan here. We got uh, this is where we check the oil. This is the oil level with the engine running and up to temperature. Should just dribble out there. You can see right there is a plug inside of it. Um, there's four magnets in here. We're going to clean up. And uh, this, to my knowledge, this truck 130,000 miles has not had the oil changed in this tranny. And this is the normal wear metal from that 130,000. Um, looks like there's just a couple of smaller little chunkies there. I don't know exactly what that is, but. Uh, might be from the original break-in yet. It's not a hard part. It looks like it's kind of a crushy part. It's nothing really hard. Not like a bearing, like a needle bearing or anything. It's just a piece of it's like metal filings maybe from when the tranny was made. We're going to take these out one at a time and uh, clean them up. And what I'll use is just a paper towel and clean off that dirt load that's on the magnet that it's collected. And then what I do is use a little bit of ether to get it finally clean and dry. And blow it. And you can get her nice and clean that way. We'll do that to all four of them and clean up the pan. The gasket's a reusable gasket. Up here it looked like it was leaking, but actually the uh, engine oil pan was dribbling back just a little bit here. As you can see the rest of it was, was nice and dry. We're going to reuse that gasket. If you want to put a new one up at this time, you sure could. Um, like I say, this one here, there's really nothing wrong with it. We're going to reuse it. So we'll get things cleaned up and get ready to go back up in again. Okay, we got the gasket all cleaned up. If you got a new one, like I said, now's the time to put a new one on if you want to. This is a reusable one. So we'll press that back in place. It's all ready to go. And then we got the magnets. There we go. We're all cleaned up and ready to go back together with that. Now we'll do the transmission filter. Okay, we're ready to put this transmission filter in. The one I've got is a Wix 58136 for this 2007. And uh, got the new O-ring on right here. It's ready to go on. And we've got the four bolts. And those bolts get torqued to 85 inch-pounds. So we're going to torque those down to 85 inch pounds and next thing we'll be doing is putting a transmission pan on. Okay, I've cleaned up the gasket area, got that all nice and clean. Uh, some of the oil might run back here on the back side, just wipe that off. I think the rest of it's good all the way around, looks good. So we're ready to put that pan up. If you live somewhere where you're using uh, road salt, I would recommend putting some anti-seize on those bolts. I had uh, some of those are starting to turn kind of a whitish color from corrosion. And uh, eventually they lock up in that aluminum. I've had them twist off before. So a little bit of Loctite or uh, anti-seize will, will help uh, deal with that issue. We've got the magnets put back in, the gaskets on. And we are ready to set that back up in place. And these transmission bolts here should get 65 inch pounds of torque to hold that pan on. So we're going to go ahead and put these all in, get them torqued, and then we'll move on to the next step, getting ready to do the flush. Okay, we've got the fill plug here on the driver's side. You can see right here is the drive shaft. On these older uh, Tundras, the fill plug is right here. It's towards the front of the transmission on the driver's side. The newer ones, it's towards the rear of the transmission on the passenger side. Now, to take this out, 
Uh, you can use either a 24 millimeter or a 15 16 wrench to, uh, to turn that loose. It does have an o-ring seal on it. And I'll get that out so you can see what it looks like. That o-ring likes to bind it up a little bit. It wants to come on a little hard. You might have to use a wrench on it, but I'll show you the spot on the other side where it is on the newer, newer vehicles. See if I can get over there. Okay, so right over here, it's going to be right in this general area, right up here towards the back of that transmission. You can kind of see where the back of the pan is, but on the newer ones, that plug is going to be right up in this uh, in this area, and it's going to look just the same as the one I just loosened up. That gives you some idea where those plugs are at for filling that tranny. Okay, we're going to find this uh, cooler line, transmission cooler line we're going to use to flush. And we're down here under the front of the truck. And uh, we can see right up here is the radiator hose. I got my hand on that right now. And let me zoom out here a little bit. Okay, so there's three hoses up here. There's one right here by the frame. And that one there is for power steering. Okay. And then there's one right here, right next to it, and that's the supply from the transmission up to the cooler. And the one that is closest to this radiator hose right here is the one we want to take off. That's the return oil going back to the transmission. So that's where we're going to take the line off to do our flush. So we're going to go ahead and it's a, it's a spring clamp on there. You can use a needle nose on there and squeeze it together and get it off. And we're going to get that off and we'll uh, show you how to do the flush. Okay, this tube right here. This rubber hose, that's going to be the fluid flowing out of the cooler. What I have here is some 3 8 OD uh, steel tubing. And I got a double flare I put on the end. So if you got anything that's just slightly under a half inch, it'll push right in there. That'll bring that fluid down here so we can get it into the drain pan. And uh, for that flush when we start the engine. So that'll keep you from making a mess on the rest of these hoses. It'll bring that fluid on down to the pan. Okay, we're about ready to do this flush, and what I did on that fill plug, um, I measured how much oil we got out from draining the pan and taking that pan off. It was right at four quarts. And what I did is I took out that drain plug, and I filled up. I put actually seven quarts in. The thing holds a total of 11, and uh, yes, it's over full, but we're going to be dumping that fluid right directly out after it goes through the torque converter. So we're going to go till we see a good color change. And then we're going to recheck and refill the oil with the transmission. And uh, then we'll do a final drive, get it up to temperature, and do the final check. So go ahead and start it. It starts sputtering like that, we're drawing down to the bottom where the filter's sucking off the pan. So right now, that fluid is, looks like it's nice cherry red. And like I said, I put in seven quarts, we drained out four. So right now, we've got a majority of that oil out. So what I'm going to do is hook that uh, cooler line back up, and we're going to fill up that tranny. Show you the procedure on that. And we're pretty well done. We got a nice color change, it's kind of a nice cherry red now. Not nearly as dark as what it was. 
So that chases most all that oil out. You never get 100% of it out without disassembling a tranny. But I've been doing it this way for about uh, close to 20 years on all kinds of vehicles, and I've never had an issue. So, all right. Okay, we're going to put that uh, return line back on that cooler tube. And uh, again, a needle nose works real good to, to put on that uh, spring clamp. It's a little snug up there with your hand, but if you turn that hose right, you can get on it pretty good. Now we can clean up the oil that's there. That's all buttoned up. Okay, we got the old oil here that we took out. Shoot a little new end, you can kind of compare the color. So it gives you some idea what we got there. Okay, we've done uh, the flush and we're going to refill the uh, pan until it comes out of the check hole. And uh, then we're going to start it up and we're going to fill it up again until it just starts to dribble out. Then we're going to take it for a drive, get it up the temp, and we'll do our final check. So we're going to go ahead and add. Comes. Just put that in for now. Go ahead and start it up. Okay, we're right at just shy of 11 quarts right now and it's running out of our tube there. We're good to go. We're going to tighten this up. We're going to put our fill plug in. We're going to take it for a test drive and we're going to recheck the level again. Okay, before we do the test drive, we're going to take out our drill bit. 
out of that bypass that goes around that uh, transmission thermostat. And uh, now we're ready to take it for a test drive. All right, we've taken this for a test drive. We got the temperature up about 120. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start it up and, and uh, recheck the fluid level. So go ahead and start it. So that flow starts slowing down. Which is about right there. Okay, shut it off. All right, so we're at about 120, and the fluid is just starting to stop the flow down there, starting to slow down. So next thing we're going to do is torque this uh, this plug here, and we're done with this transmission flush. Okay, the way I flushed this transmission, we used right at just about 11 quarts, and I was within about this about a half a quart uh, of being where we needed to be. So after we get everything heated up, obviously the oil expands a little bit. Um, so Again, you can see we got a good color change in that oil. It's a nice cherry red now. But uh, that kind of gives you some idea how to do that. Like I say, a total of 11 quarts. Um, we got the, this thing up to temp. We're probably 130, 140 degrees. Uh, thermostat should be open, flowing through the cooler. Uh, and we got oil dribbling out at a nice stream there at that point. So good to go. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amswell Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil cooling system transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.